Hello, and my name is Pete Jennings. Welcome to a talk on Valkyries. So, are Valkyries bloodthirsty harpies or the rewarders of heroes? The simplest of questions sometimes lead to the most complex of answers. And I don't believe that I'm being particularly abstruse by declaring that Valkyries cover a wide and sometimes contradictory range of ideas to different people. The general public's often sole associated idea with Valkyries is The Ride of the Valkyries by Wagner, but a thrilling piece of classical music that even those with other musical tastes are able to recognise. Who can forget its uh, use in the film Apocalypse Now? Yet to get to the roots of what inspired Wagner and so many other people since, to use the immensely powerful imagery of these much misunderstood entities, we have to go back at least 1500 years to their Germanic roots and maybe further. Valkyrie, often also spelled Valkyrie or Valkyra, the chooser of the slain, are in Norse mythology a collection of females sent to the battlefields to choose the slain who were worthy of a place in Valhalla. They ride horses and wear armour and sometimes bear swords or spears. And the Valkyrie, Valkyrs and Valkyri spellings are also used within Old English texts, showing that they had an Anglo-Saxon equivalent. A couple of the Anglo-Saxon riddles seem to allude to Valkyries, and there are even Valkyries curses featured in the Icelandic Hel Kivitha hunting banner too, and the Norwegian Dragnil Drakaga's charm. Valkyries are also sometimes known as wish maids, Odin's maids, shield maidens and swan maidens. And the latter term links in with the role of three of them as partners of Valandra, Wyland Smith, and his brothers Erd and Slathith in the Valandath Earth Vida story adapted by Wagner. They are mentioned in some of the Norse sagas, such as Njal's saga. Some Valkyries are described in supernatural terms as part of the Deesir, female guardian spirits, separate to the main Aesir and Vanir families of Germanic deities. One of the prophetic Norns, Weird Sisters, is known as Skold, and she also performs a Valkyrie role. Other Valkyries are the human daughters or wives of earthly kings. There has been a suggestion that maybe the Valkyries were priestesses of the goddess Thraya, who traditionally received half of the dead heroes into Fothrangra, the warrior fields, and her own Sithrum near Hall, the many seated. Odin, or Woden, gets the other half in Valhalla to fight on his side at the final doom of the gods, Ragnarok, against Loki, Sertra, Hel, the Jotun giants, plus Fenris Wolf, and Jormungandr, the colossal world serpent. One reason why Freya is portrayed as being connected with Valkyries is because of one of her titles in Njal's saga is Valfreya, which has been interpreted as Mistress of the Slain. But as it's pointed out, Odin has the title of Valfadir, yet no one tries to call him a Valkyrie. The Valfreya title could just as well be translated as Lady of the Battle Dead. Certainly the Valkyries are said to be under the command of Odin in this ancient text. Their leadership of Freya seems to be a more recent idea. Another one of her titles in the Skelt's Capital is Edandli Valfaz, which can be translated as Possessor of the Slain, which does not include choosing them. Let's think about the Valkyrie role. Let me dispel one popular misconception. I have yet to read a credible text in which a Valkyrie actually fight. Now, that may go against some firmly adopted modern ideas of warrior women and strong female heroines, so sorry if I disappoint you. They are certainly credited with being present at battles encouraging male heroic behaviour and choosing the best. 
They may even fall in love with one and protect or destroy them. Occasionally, they may be described as holding a spear or sword or bearing a shield to protect someone, but never recorded as fighting. Valkyries can be seen flying through air or water, usually riding horses or sometimes wolves or boars. Although Victorian artists may have portrayed them as beautiful maidens, they are more authentically described as frighteningly fierce, blood-soaked and screaming. Valkyries are also credited with being a part of the wild hunt of Odin, Woden, descending from winter gales to collect souls of the lost and unwary. They may appear in a more peaceful guise as bearers of mead and food to the warriors in Valhalla. For example, Hild, Thrud and Hlok are all said to dispense ale in Valhalla, according to the grimness, well, the sayings of Grimnir. Valkyries can appear to act like the Norns, Erd, Vedandi and Skold, in weaving fate on a loom of bones, skulls and swords and then destroying it. Erd approximately translates as fate or weird, but Andy as necessity and scold as being. Scold also performs the Valkyrie role. Do not be misled by erroneous texts that describe them as past, present and future. There are subtle differences. I've listed around 50 Valkyrie individual names in my book, plus their variants. There are also at least four individual Valkyrie stories within the sagas, apart from the famous Brunhild, Svarba, Sigrun and Hyad all have their own tales. Odin, the chief god known as the Allfather, gets the other half of the chosen dead heroic warriors. They're sometimes called Anhasia, those who fight alone. The feast in his hall of Gladsheimer, uh, which is the Hall of the Slain, in Asgard each night, and then they fight again um, each other every day at the battle plain of Valhalla. Warriors selected for Valhalla enter the hall via a gate known as Valgrind. The sentinels of a wolf and eagle. The warrior spirits are miraculously cured from their wounds each night. They eat meat from a daily revived boar called Sethribine and cooked in a giant cauldron, Elthribine, by the cook Odrimine. Their evening hall, Glathraheim, is said to be roofed with spears and full of weapons and armour. The Valkyries serve them an unending supply of mead flowing from the udders of the goat Heathrun. One presumes that the possible hangover does not affect their fighting abilities the following day. Sigdrithal. In this saga, the male hero Sigurd is heading south towards the land of the Franks from the mountain Hinderfell he sees a light burning brightly up in the sky. On approaching, he finds Skjaldborg, which is a shield wall with a pennant flying over it. He penetrates the shield wall, in retelling sometimes a ring of flames, and finds a sleeping warrior in full armour. On removing the helmet, he's surprised to find that it is a female. Her armour is so tight that it is embedded into her body, so he uses his sword to cut her out of it. She wakes up and they start talking to each other. The woman is a Valkyrie called Sigdrifa, and she gives Sigurd a horn of mead to help him to remember all that she tells him. She recites a heathen prayer, one of the food that survive intact today. Hel Dagra, Hel Dag Sinir, Hel Notok Nift, Ovrethum Orgum, Litith Ocrothinic. Or Gifith sit yondam sigra. Hele esir, hele esinir, hele sia in filetun fold, mal ochmanvit. 
kefis och merum zweim och lech nichts hindre metham liefen. And this translates as hail day, hail sons of day, a night, and her daughter now. Look on us here with loving eyes, but waiting we victory win. Hail to the gods, ye goddesses hail, and all the generous earth. Give to us wisdom and goodly speech and healing hands lifelong. Well, that's all I'm going to say about Valkyries for the time being. Um, there is a lot more to it than this short talk can cover. And if you're interested in finding out more about Valkyries, well, I would recommend you to go and buy my book. Um, it's called Valkyries, um, Selectors of Heroes, Their Rules Within Viking and Anglo-Saxon Heathen Beliefs um, by Pete Jennings. Um, if you just put Pete Jennings and Valkyries, you should be able to find it on Amazon, which is probably the easiest way to find it. Um, or you can obtain it via my website. Um, the address is there on your screen at www.pipperswick.org. Thanks for joining me and um, hope you enjoy your company again sometime. Bye bye.